Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from uh, Lake Oswego. I love saying that, Lake Oswego. Why do you like to say that? I don't so know much? why. It's actually Portland is where more specifically yeah, you are, just but south of but I just like what Lake Oswego. It just I don't know rolls off the tongue nicely. This is uh, Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for her once uh, fortnightly trip into Bennett Land or Double Bennett Land. Um, uh, first of all, I want to, you know, um, I want to talk to you about something that you wrote this week, and and I uh, a little tear came to my eye as I read it. Uh, you had a very happy happenstance, and now I don't want you to get mad at me for saying this, okay? But can I call you grandma? <laughs> I don't. <care. laughs> I mean, if I were going to choose something like that, um, I would probably pick Gran or Granny. Yeah. Mima is something people use a lot, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you are, you never were a grandmother till recently. Yes. Let's explain this again, part of it, and then let's get to the more present story. Um, uh when I first met you, you admitted to me that you had uh, recently had a child that yes. you gave up for adoption. Yes. And all of a sudden, because of this damn DNA stuff, you know, you sign up for the DNA thing. It says, oh, this person is a 100% match to you or something ridiculous. 50% means it's, child or parent. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. And it turned out it was your kid. Yes, <laughs> because sometimes with these DNA matches, they send you these things like, here are the closest matches to you. You may know this person. <laughs> know this person? He came out of me. You know, uh, so you found your son after, what? 55 50, years. 55 years. Half a century. That's amazing. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, as we all know, you, you have a cancer. I, I hate to say it. You know, it's a word that just doesn't roll off my tongue too easily. And so at this time, for this to happen to you is, I think, nothing short of wonderful. You know, a friend of mine, I wrote about, uh, my son, Tom is his name, and I've been talking on the phone weekly for a while. Mm -hmm. And then last Saturday, which I wrote about yesterday, he and his wife and his son came to visit and spend the day. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> speaking of being a grandma and an old lady, why did I start this sentence? <laughs> <laughs> to tell the story about them coming here. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I, I, I can't remember where I was going with that sentence. <laughs> well, they showed up. Okay. <laughs> um, but at any rate, um, they came and we had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. um, and... I don't know where I was going with that. Ask your next, next question. <laughs> well, what I would ask, first of all, because this was your first actual physical meeting with him. Uh, yes. He lives down in where, Napa in, in California? In the Napa Valley. Napa Valley. So did he drive up with the kid, wife and kids? No, they flew. They flew. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, they were up here looking for homes because they have, long before knowing about me, they had been planning on moving to Oregon. Oh wow! Okay, so uh, so it was a it had other reasons for existence. Anyway, uh, they came to visit you. Now I got under. I got to ask you, in anticipation of this, what was going through your head? Well, you know, we'd we'd spoken a, a number of times on the phone, and I'd really come to like him a lot. I mean, yeah. I mean, I suppose you could, you know, in the same circumstance, you might not like the person. I suppose that could happen, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I really like him, and we have a lot of weird little things you wouldn't guess were genetic that we have in common, which I think we talked about on another yeah. one of these shows. Yeah. And um, and I was, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I was apprehensive. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, well, I mean, not a lot, but a little bit. And uh, there's a knock at the door at the appropriate time we'd planned. And I opened the door, and I'd seen photographs of him, and there he was, recognized him. His wife, Kathy, and their little four-year-old, um, Henry. And 
it all just melted away. Any apprehension that I had just was gone. It was just gone. But, gone. but, but and prior- we had a wonderful day. But- we talked about our families and I don't know, just I everything under the sun. They arrived with food. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so we had that, and I had a couple of bottles of really good wine. We didn't give Henry any of that, but we drank it. And uh, and this wonderful little kid who brought me this mug he made for me. <laughs> Look at that. I'm drinking my coffee. Uh, how old is he? That's a pretty good mug for a four-year-old. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. Yes. Wow. So... Uh, it, 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 all I'm saying is, is that the apprehension must have been huge, and well, and then it when wasn't and, huge, and then when it, it was there, and then it when it there. happened, all the all the apprehension was gone, because it was a reality now. You know. You know, there's a. I can't explain this at all. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got something in my throat. I I can't explain this, and I've stopped asking myself now. I feel like I've known not just him. But his wife, I've known, it's like they aren't strangers to me. Right, right. Um, and I'm related to him, you know, biologically, not to her. Yeah. Um, but, and, you know, I never raised any children. What do I know about them? And they're kind of these little little things to me that are liable to do something I don't know how to handle. And... This kid was he's a wonderfully behaved, well, well, terrific kid. What's what's uh, great though? What's great though is you have a uh, a child and you a son, and you've never had to go through all the problems of raising him. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> In other words, exactly. you went straight to person. Okay, <laughs> you know. just presented to me as a grown up. <laughs> Can I ask you? This is kind of interesting. How did he refer to you? Did he Meaning? say? Did he say mom? No. no, no. He has a mother. A yeah, mother raised right. him. So he calls you Ronnie, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I don't believe that giving birth has anything to oh, do with you're being a right. mother. You're quite right. Um, it has to do with taking care of somebody day in and day out, loving them no matter what, and doing the best you can to turn them into a wonderful, grown-up, responsible person. Well, if I were if I were him, being who I am, I would refer to you as bio mom. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> this so is, it was a this wonderful is, thing, and we're you going know, to when you and do it I, again. When you and I first met, uh, and I mentioned this in that in your blog, uh, when you and I first met uh, back in what nineteen? God, what year was it? Was I, it, well, I, I had, I, it had I to was be it had to be like seventeen or eighteen, but maybe I was a year or two older. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was about nineteen uh, sixty. If I if I'm if I'm remembering it correctly, because I remember I at nineteen I left town to go to to Reno, right? Right. And but uh, I knew you then. And then I oh you did know me then. Yes, well, we knew each other when then, you were in then, Reno. But then we're talking about maybe fifty nine. But anyway, when I met you, you you told me about this story, and I guess the, the reason I kind of bonded with you, and I thought about this, and I I don't know if it was, if I thought it at the time, was that I had gone through a similar experience from the other side. Uh, mm-hmm. I had had a girlfriend give birth to a child and give it up for adoption, and it was something that weighed heavily on me. So I could relate to the fact that. You know, this could not have been an easy thing for you to deal with. And I think over the years, your mind has gone to that place now and then, wondering about the child and what happened to the child and so on. So here you have the resolution. I don't know what I would do if the resolution happened to me, like a kid came knocking on my door and saying, hey, I'm your son. Hi, Hi, Dad. Dad. (laughs) Yeah, you know. Um, uh, So it's... you know, I, I know that it did affect you at the time, and it probably in some ways informed the rest of your life in, in certain ways you probably can't put your finger on. I know it did with mine. Like, I never had any kids or after did I, that. Nor did we. Because, because I didn't trust. No, because I didn't feel that I trusted any relationship I had to be strong enough that there, you know, I'd, you know that even if we got divorced, 
that person wouldn't hold the kid against me or use the kid against me. So I didn't, I, I was very particular about, and I didn't want to get somebody else preg pregnant um, accidentally. Uh, I only wanted to do it on purpose. So I always took, you know, uh, extreme measures in my life to see that I wasn't getting somebody pregnant. I knew that I could, obviously. Uh, so I, I um, uh, so I, I know it can have a long-term lasting effect on you. I think had that not happened to me when I was what, 19, uh, I think that I probably would have had kids pretty easily over the years. You know, my whole life would have changed as a result of that because your priorities change, you know. Here I, I never had kids, so I could be as selfish as I wanted to with my life. But when you got those other people involved, it becomes a real problem, you know? What are you smiling That's about? pretty amazing. I mean, the people who commented on my blog post about our meeting, uh, a friend of mine in Boston, Millie Garfield, yeah. um, I think she emailed me rather than living, leaving a note, um, that this is this was Hanukkah week, and she said, you know, the miracle of, and she explained, of course, the miracle of Hanukkah. They had enough oil for one day of light, yeah. and it lasted for eight days, and, she, and that was a miracle. And she said, and this is your miracle. Oh, it is. It, In the no, same week as the Hanukkah I, miracle. I mean, it, it's a lucky happenstance, you know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, um, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm sure I will never uh, have that moment. And I, to this day, I wonder whatever happened to the kid. I think he became Howard Stern, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I always thought of Howard Stern as about the same age as you. I guess I'm wrong. He's younger. Huh? Oh, no, he's not 70. I'm going to be 79 on Tuesday. Uh, was Tuesday? What is it? Tuesday? Monday. Whatever. Tuesday. Tuesday is the 18th? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, 79. Uh, Howard's only like... Oh, 62, something like that, 63, maybe a little older. But anyway, so this is, this is, you know, this is just a wonderful thing. If anybody has a chance, you should read about it on her blog at uh, uh, timegoesby.net because it's it just, I, I read it and I was just so happy for you. I could feel the happiness oozing off the uh, screen at me, <laughs> you know. In other news. In uh, meanwhile, in other news, yeah. I'm starting new chemo on Thursday. Oh. Um, because the other wasn't working, and that's why I have new cancer. Um, and this is like that one, although it's much stronger, and it's supposed to, if it works, extend my relatively healthy life longer than it would without the chemo right it has stronger side effects we'll see if i can handle them yeah you know. that's the hardest part you know i mean sometimes you say okay these things extend life but at what cost right what uh, you know it, it doesn't extend maybe the quality of your life that's the problem yes you know it creates a, a, a quality of life that's a bit more infirmed let's say i mean i hate to use a term like that but i mean it you know, you, you do what you can do. Yes, yeah. and right now another problem is, you know, the I, I think we discussed that the cancer had moved or appeared in one of my lungs. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they said it's due to the, those cancer nodules that I'm having a lot of trouble breathing and I have to move very slowly now and do everything slowly and rest in between. Irritating as hell, let me tell you. Oh, well, let and me ask I, you this, though. Did you start having that symptom prior to finding out that the cancer had come back? I don't remember. Because I don't remember you complaining about bright breathing. No, and I, don't I don't complain. No, no, no. no I, okay, yeah, and like a Jewish mother, you'll sit in the dark. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, please complain. You have a right to complain. No, I don't have a right to complain. You know, I compared to many people in my circumstances, more or less. I've been, one, I've been incredibly lucky. One of the things that still amazes me about this is that if you don't count the, the effects of cancer, of, of chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and in this case, the breathing, you know, problem right. that I've, that, 
that isn't it, it it's difficult but it's not horrible it's and so i just have to be slower is it amazes me that you can have something inside your body that is ravaging your body right but except for those side effects i wouldn't know that except that the doctors told me well that's what i'm I mean, saying that's just astonishing yeah, but that's what i'm saying that prior to this diagnosis that the cancer <clears throat> had come back okay uh, you seem to not complain about being short of breath or being tired all the time I mean, or whatever. Before it had recurred, I was fine for eight or nine or ten months. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, even now that it's recurred or come, moved, whatever yeah. it does, yeah. appeared in two other places, still, if you don't count the breathing problem, and of course side effects are from the chemo, not the cancer. Right. So you don't count those. Um, you're, you're doing... I can't believe that something is moving around doing terrible things inside my body that will kill me eventually. Yeah. But I feel fine. I mean, it's just, you know, cancer is possibly the most fearful medical word we have. Whenever you hear that someone has cancer, you know, there are a few cancers that we're able to take care of fairly well, but only a few. Mostly cancer means, oh, my God. And how it can be going on inside, and I feel relatively fine, just amazes me. I mean, I, I don't expect that to last forever during this process, but it still amazes me right now. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, um, uh, it, 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 it's, it's one of those kind of things that when you hear the word, you know, you immediately, I mean, people, even if somebody says, oh, you've got skin cancer, you know, they go crazy, you know, because the word cancer is a, you know, even though we know skin cancer, you can probably take care of it and it's fine. Uh, uh, a prostate so cancer is one that's easily taken care of, uh, you know, pretty much if it hasn't spread. Uh, but when you hear those words, uh, they, they have a certain resiliency that no other word has. And by the way, let's mention, Cancer isn't one disease. It's a it's a disease with all kinds of subsets. You know, mm -hmm. you've got skin cancer, you've got lung and cancer. Even if got... two people even if two people's cancer are called the same thing, it will manifest itself differently in each person, as does chemo. Right. Some people's chemo, wow, clears out the cancer and they're fine for years and years and years. Other people it has no effect, doesn't change the cancer at all. And everything in between. Um, so there's no way to predict what's going to happen for, you know, for sure. I mean, when, when the doctors say to me, you know, if you, you, if you take this chemo, you will have X amount of time. If you don't, you will have X amount of time. Um, that's their best guess. And now they're very experienced. They've worked with lots of patients. They're doing the best they can. But a cancer might run rampant or it might respond to the chemo. You never know for sure. That, it, 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 and probably it's different in everybody. One person can do the that's chemo and it doesn't work. Another person it does. You know, it's yes, it's uh, uh, it. But it is, you know, I look upon uh, as I get older. I mean, about to hit seventy nine. Geez, you know, I'm amazed at that alone. But that I've always because I have this the fear of death and because I'm also a person who always thinks of the glass as being half empty. You know. <laughs> Um, yes, I, you're right. <laughs> I, I, I constantly feel I have the Grim Reaper with his scythe standing in back of me saying, We well, all feel that well, way. Well, let's you know, see. You're not alone with let's that. see. What is it we're going to have get you? You know, I mean, I, I have no idea. You know, I, I, right now I don't have anything, you know, I, uh, but all of a sudden the doctor could say, You got something, you know, and then you go, Okay, that's what's going to get me. But meanwhile, uh, you're, you, as you get older, you, be, you begin to think in terms, I'd like to think that, hey, I have a long life, I'm going to live like I have a long life, and so on. <clears throat> but it's hard to do as you get older. You know, hard you, how? Oh, you know, I mean, for instance, we've got this problem with the, with the apartment, right, with all this legal action stuff that's going on. I'm wondering if I will live long enough to see it resolve itself. And if it resolves itself, and let's say we get a ton of money, we might buy a house in the country. 
what are we buying a house for? How long are we going to live to be able to live in that house? You know, these are things you do when you're Let me 50. give you a hint about houses in the country at your age. Yeah? You're way too far from a local hospital. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see? You see? You brought it up. You had to bring that up, okay? <laughs> you know, but there are things you think about. Do, Okay, Marjorie the other day says to me, you know, because we have this cat, we be, a cat sit every now and then that we've really come to love. And she said, why don't we get a cat? Why don't we get two cats? And I went, I can't stand to have an animal who's going to sit there and go, you know, long after you're gone, I'm still going to be here. Well, let me tell you about that. <laughs> you know? I had my cat, Ollie, Ollie yeah. Bennett, yeah. for 14 years. And he got very sick early this year. We tried a bunch of things with the vet, and eventually he'd lost so much weight, and it was time to put him, what, how, what's the phrase they yeah, use? Put, put him, him down. down or something. Oh, I put a cat down once. I said, you know what? You're not as good as the dog. That's how I put my cat down. You get the joke? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, it went by me, but now I get it. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that had bothered me, because he was a biter, he bit my ankles all the time, and even mm -hmm. my hands sometimes. And he and I had learned to work that out pretty well. We yelled at each other once in a while. Um, but what worried me, because I had been diagnosed with cancer, is particularly because he was a biter. <laughs> <and> <laughs> yeah. Who was ever going to take this cat? Right. And I died. So in a way, I mean, you, you're never, ever happy about anybody dying even your pets yeah but in a way i it, it took a worry away that what would what would happen to my cat if nobody took him yeah so you know and i'd love to have another cat but i don't think that's a real smart idea in my current condition um no i, I but as i say i i don't know that i want to get an animal because how, how long do i am the you know cat can live to be cats especially can live to be like 18 years old. I had one lived to be 19. Shabbos lived too. to be 19. And because <laughs> of that, uh, I, I think about, you know, am I going to be able to see, be old enough to see this cat go? No. So I, I just, that's the reason why I don't get an animal, just because Here's of my age. It's very cool to do. I wrote about it and then I actually have done it once. I would oh. like to do it again. I went to a shelter place. I called them and talked to them about it. And they had a whole parcel of kittens. Mm -hmm. And they brought out all the kittens in one little room for me. And I got down on the floor and played with these eight or ten kittens crying <laughs> all over me. And <laughs> it's the most wonderful thing. You could go try that. Um, <laughs> you could do it with puppies, too. It's just as good with puppies, it, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess so. You know, I mean, I just, it's just, uh, but all I'm saying is, uh, you know, it's like you, you always buy ripe bananas, I think somebody said. You know, you never know. <laughs> and and uh, it's um, so, so, I mean, that's something you, you have to constantly think about. In your case, you don't know how long you're going to live. You know, you know, you, they've, they've given, given me some nice numbers, but, you know, it's all their best guess is what they're and doing. And you could outlive those, too. You know, it, yeah. it, it, I mean... Again, you're you're still in that place in in the world where you don't know how much longer you have. Just like the I don't know how much is, longer is what I you have. You don't understand. Yeah. I didn't understand is how much work it is to get ready to die. You were saying just that. Just so much to get done. And the list just get longer and longer and I need the time to get everything It's in it's, order. it's worse than planning for a trip. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, maybe you could look at it that way. Planning for a trip. Okay, yes. we're almost we're almost at our uh, end here of our. Oh, well, I also the other thing. Have I told you that I've got no hair anymore? Well, uh, you you mentioned that before we <clears throat> went on, and that's why I brought it. I was going to bring it up now because you said you wanted to do the big reveal. Well, the thing about you know, you you women. Oh. Wow. Ooh, son of a bitch. Hmm. Well, I'm, hold on a second, folks. We will uh, go back and call her again. Uh, apparently, there was a, uh, a problem here. 
There we go. We're back I'm again. I'm so sorry. We're, I don't know what happened. We're back again. We'll leave it in. We'll believe, I don't know. Sometimes that's the great Skype gods. But anyway, go back okay. to what we were talking about. Um, where were we? Oh, we were talking about uh, chemo and the hair. and. Yeah, it's not, you know, it, it. a lot of hair came out. And so there's just pieces of hair in funny places that were just stupid looking. You can't comb it or anything. Yeah. Um, and so... I just shave it all off because yeah. there's nothing else to do. And the guy who cut my hair, who apparently lost his job now because I have no hair. He <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> yeah. um, he bought me a wig and trimmed it all up for me. And I wear that sometimes. And I also wear hats. Mm -hmm. But um, And I'm no good with scarves. I've never been able to tie scarves in any possible way. So that's out of the question. Right. Um, so I wear hats or I wear the wig, depending on the circumstances. And you know what? I didn't, you know this, but I didn't, is when you've got no hair on your head, your head gets cold. So I wear a little knit cap to bed at night now <laughs> because my head is too cold at night to sleep without it. Wow. Wow. You don't? Uh, uh, no, I don't wear, uh, no. Doesn't your head feel cold? N no. No, I always wear a cap when I'm out. You know, and uh, people say, why do you wear caps like this when you're on, a, on a, a, a decent day? And I go, because the sun goes, beats down on your head and you get a sunburn on the top of your head. So that's why I wear a cap, not because I'm ashamed of being bald. Oh, but, well, you know how it's mostly men who are bald, but occasionally a movie star or a model or something mm -hmm. shaves their head. Mm -hmm. And some people, men and women, Look terrific bald because they have a wonderfully shaped skull. Yeah. And other people, eh, skull's not shaped so wonderfully. Yeah. And many years ago when I was going through trying new hairstyles all the time, I thought I would shave my head. It would certainly be easier, wouldn't it, than everything else. Um, but I didn't know what the shape of my head was. Uh, so when this happened, and I'm stuck with it now, um, I have a pretty nicely shaped head. But the problem with somebody with a face as old as mine walking around with no hat or no hair mm -hmm. is that people look at you and they, oh, chemo, and they're right, and they don't know what to say to you. People have a lot of, they don't know what to say when, you know, when they know you have cancer, some people anyway. So I keep something on my head so that we don't run into that problem. Well, my, but my, I thought since we are both my joke stone to you. cold balls, yeah, we my, should show this off at the end yeah, of the show. Yeah. But before we do that, I, I just say that probably, you know, I'd say, what's your sell-by date? You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'll do it. I'll do it if you do it. We're both okay. going to go naked, right? Now, this okay. is because I think the audience needs to see this because we know what you look like with hair. And, and uh, hey, you know, this is what this is. <clears throat> this is part of life, too. OK, here. Here we go. This yeah. is mine. And here she goes. Wow, you you actually look great. You've got <laughs> a great shape. Great, you, you've got a great shaped head. But I don't care when I walk past the mirror like that, and I thought I would. No, actually, I think turn sideways a little bit. Let me see. Uh, yeah, wow. Except for the the dent in your head from the hat, it looks. Dent uh, in my head. Yeah, yeah. The, see the little ring right around there where the hat was. Well, was I can't on see because yeah. it's only a little picture here. Yeah. But I've had the hat on for an hour. That happened. Yeah. It'll go away. But uh, hey, you know, if you want to do the show every time we do this like that, I'll do it like this. Well, it's chilly in here, so <laughs> I'll wear a hat or a wig. <laughs> you, you wear a hat or a wig. Well, all I say I'm saying is you uh, you look very good. You look very good. Well, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to do yes. this. What the hell? <laughs> Ronnie, always Maybe good. Maybe I'll just do a parade of all my hats. I have lots of hats. Okay, well, we'll do that. And, you know, and uh, maybe you'll wear the wig once. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, uh, if I still have one of my old hair pieces that I tried for about a minute and a half in my life, <laughs> right, I'd, exactly. I'd wear one of those. <laughs> anyway, Ronnie, we love you, and we love talking to you, and we'll do it again in a couple of weeks, Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous... Oh, by the way, uh, uh, timegoesby.net is where you can oh, find her blog. Idea. The lovely and attractive and formerly married to me, Ronnie Bennett. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs>